Yo, yo, I'm Karen Say Gaming, and welcome! And welcome to the video. It's Halloween, skeletons, pumpkins, boo. Oh boy, oh, oh boy. So yeah, um, being that this is actually my first ever Halloween video on this channel, and just in general, um, you know what? Let me give you guys a little history lesson about my history with the horror genre. There's a reason why we're doing this. I never liked horror as a kid. Never liked horror movies, TV shows, games, etc. Now, if it wasn't zombies, i.e. any George A. Romero film, Resident Evil, or House of the Dead, I couldn't handle it at all. And you want to catch my black ass trying to watch movies like Halloween, The Exorcist, and the one I still can't stand to this day, Nightmare on Elm Street. I can't stand that shit. But as I got older, I slowly warmed up to horror movies. Funny enough, starting back around 2010 with the 2006 horror anime, Higurashi When They Cry. Yeah, if you watch Higurashi, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. From then, I slowly started getting into the world of horror movies, first starting with Battle Royale. After a couple years of watching paranormal horror movies, I eventually got around to watching my first ever slasher, being the Scream TV show back in 2016, and then afterwards I started watching the Scream movies. And to say the least, I'm not as scared of horror films anymore, and in testament to that, I actually ended up watching the new Candyman film, which scared me, but not to the point where I couldn't sleep for like two days. That happened after I watched Nightmare on Elm Street as a kid. Now, for games, that's a whole different story, because I still won't play games like Outlast or Slenderman. But for this video, let's take it back, you know, let's go retro for it right now, and let's talk about the film that would inspire Resident Evil, Sweet Home. Not this Sweet Home, I mean this Sweet Home. Sweet Home is a Famicom game based on the movie of the same name and released in Japan on December 15th, 1989. The game focuses on a film crew that gets trapped inside a haunted mansion and they have to find their way out. The game was developed by Capcom, and the man behind it all was Takuro Fujiwara, who y'all may know as the man who made Strider and Ghosts and Goblins. Fuck, I gotta review that eventually. Now Sweet Home's development was actually pretty interesting, as both the movie and the game was being made side by side, making it a different experience. And speaking of which, while the movie isn't really held in high regard, this game is fucking praised on every front. The reason being that this game is what would eventually become the blueprint for Resident Evil, survival games as a whole, and for some reason Metroidvanias. Everything from item management, backtracking the old areas to solve puzzles you couldn't solve earlier, and opening doors are all here. And in terms of reception, this game is considered to be one of the greatest horror games ever made, and not only that received praise for the gruesome visuals, which for a Famicom game was straight up disturbing. Long story short, it's actually pretty important, yet Americans have, for that everyone across the world besides Japan wouldn't get this game. And you know what, it makes sense because for a Famicom game, it has some gruesome depths. That was until Gaijin Productions and Sewer Slide Translations would translate the game into English in June 15th, 2000, which is how we are going to be able to play this horrifying game. But let's not waste any more time and let's get into this game's um unusual story. Sweet Home on the Famicom has an interesting way of telling the story told in the movies. Actually, it kind of makes sense to talk about the differences between the movie and the game. Let's get on that real quick. Besides having similar openers involving the film crew getting trapped in the mansion by the vengeful spirit of Lady Mamiya, the movie goes through a different series of events that both has moments that serve to flesh out the characters and the deaths of two major characters, including Asuka, who gets killed by a falling battle axe, and Taguchi, who gets the worst death by being fried in half by the mansion's shadows, and Larry gets beaten to death by Asuka. Ugh, Jesus Christ. The game, however, doesn't really do that. Instead, it goes more in depth of what would cause the events. And everything else is more or less your journey through the game until you defeat Lady Mamiya, especially since it has multiple endings. In a way, the game is a standalone experience that only adapts the name and location from the film. Especially since the tone of the game is creepy as hell compared to the movie where it doesn't even get scary until the second half of it. Now, if you want to, you can watch the movie on YouTube, which is in English subs, and is in higher quality, link in bio. But just letting you know now, you don't need to watch the movie to enjoy or understand the game. It already does that by laying out notes across the mansion, as well as drew corpses, creepily enough. I did watch bits and pieces of the movie, and I can tell you. Despite the tone shifts, the movie has really good special effects with the time, and I love the interactions between the characters. But, let's jump onto the gameplay, because... 
man, we have a lot to talk about. Okay, so to start, Sweet Home is a JRPG, which actually works when combined with the survival aspects of this game. When you start it, you can control the five characters seen in the movie, each with their own quirks. Kazuo has a lighter to burn ropes and light candles, Emmy has a key that can open the majority of doors, Akiko has a health kit that can heal status ailments, Taro has a camera which can be used to take pics of frescoes that can give you hints, and you have Asuka, who has a vacuum to pick debris that blocks your path for some reason. But couldn't you just... you know what? No, no, never mind. I'm not even gonna question that. Everything for the most part is what you would normally see in a standard JRPG. There's random encounters and you can fight them with the attack command. Beating enemies gives you XP, which after collecting enough of them increases your level. Basic, right? Let's start by talking about the three elephants in the room. First of all, you can't all team up together. Instead, y'all separate in teams of three and two, and you have to progress through the entire game like this, with a few areas loosely suggesting you should split up one by one to make things easier, like this room with boulders, or the final level of the game with these annoying ass spirits that will take you to another side of the mansion if you get caught. The second thing is that this game has little to no health items. These tonics are what increases your HP and also your prayer points, by the way, prayer points is a mechanic used in different situations like praying the random shit to have items magically appear, and using it in battle which could deal a shit ton of damage. But you only have so much when you begin the game, so you gotta be careful with how you use these points. Plus, tonics are spread across major areas in the game, meaning you have to pick or choose when and when not to use a tonic. And this leads us to the last elephant in the room. So, what happens if you fucked around and your character dies? Well, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary peeps, you're fucked. Because this game has permadeath, meaning if they die, they die for good, and you can't use that character's unique quirk. So what this means is that you're going to have to go and fight items like pills, a broom, and so on and so forth to deal with obstacles. And there's many ways for a character to die. Of course, there's losing all your health, or not saving your teammate if you possibly fall off a broken plank of woods or get caught in quicksand, which I avoid it like the Black Plague. Okay, but how badly can all of this affect the game? <laughs> Oh my god, then I want to smash my laptop into pieces. So, this game has an item management system that will be done a whole lot better in Resident Evil. But in this game, you only have three inventory slots. Two for miscellaneous items and one for weapons which can be found across the mansion. Speaking of weapons, they start off weak as hell. And early on in the game, this makes using weapons a make or break because you, my friend, are a weak bitch. And the only way to approve a weapon's power is of course you're leveling up, which is obscure as fuck. Plus, when you level up, it only levels up your attack power, nothing else. No defense stat, no evasion stat, nothing. And like I said before, in order to increase your overall health, you have to use these tonics, which mind you, is spread across the mansion and there's not a lot of these. Oh, and don't get me started on the backtracking, but before I talk about it, I want to at least praise the game for its variety in its environment, as well as for its uniqueness. But all that pales in comparison for when you fuck up, you gotta go back and get an item. Lord, does that shit make me wanna scream. But the game does have some good things about it. Every time I do backtrack to a previous area, I get a sense of completion for some reason, and I really, really like it. The game has a tense atmosphere that combined with the unsettling and detailed graphics of enemies makes the game a little horrifying at times. And to add to the intensity, there's quick time events that pop up out of nowhere, and these moments often caught me by surprise. Luckily, if you fuck up, you just lose a bit of HP, nothing too serious. Oh, and the music. Oh my god, man, the damn music is so, so good. I love that a lot of the music fits with different moves depending on where you are, which brings some of these dim areas to life. I love the music that plays while on the lake, and the music that's played before encountering the enemy. As much as I love this game, I have to write about something. And not only that, I'm gonna give you guys a suggestion, you know, because I'm feeling nice right now, and uh, this will greatly help you if you decide to ever play this game. <clears throat> Fuck the final boss fight. So, as you progress through the game, you're gonna come across items that require multiple revisits before you can attain them. These items are special because they eventually correlate to the final boss, which in and of itself is a puzzle. Now, I like that the final boss is a puzzle, which is a nice change of pace for most JRPGs, but I urge you to go and get the items that require multiple revisits, or you're gonna keep on getting kicked out of the final dungeon. And trust me, these little spirits are fucking annoying to deal with. And finally, this is another guide game. Prepare to hear that shit a lot in my later videos. 
Using the guide can make this game a lot faster, as well as help you avoid instant death areas. Without the guide, you won't know where these areas are, and if your character dies, you better be prepared to either restart or trek on with a big ass handicap. Luckily, you can save at any time, which you know what, I'm at least kind of happy about. Kind of. Ooh, okay, so um, that was a lot, but what's my overall thoughts about Sweet Home? Despite my issues with the game, I loved every bit of it. I loved the tense and scary atmosphere the game gives off through its enemy design and graphics that really depict a old, broken down, haunted ass mansion. The gameplay, while annoying, does make things interesting and has kind of taught me some new strategies to take with me for future JRPGs, like waiting in certain places to heal and etc. Plus, I forgot to mention this, but I do love how your character's special item can be used in battle as well as this call option to make battles a lot easier. Another thing is that you don't have to grind into late game as the only boss you have to face is Lady Mamiya, and to get to her you have to be at least level 16, which isn't a complete struggle to deal with. And finally, for everything else while aging like molded cheese, it's still great to experience where a lot of survival horror elements gotta start from. And so, the question shall be asked, should you play Sweet Home? Kind of. You should. <laughs> so, so, let me go more detail. A lot of things in this game hasn't really aged well, yet I still encourage people to experience at least a little bit of it to see why this game is held in high acclaim. Now, if you do decide to fully play through this, use a guide for your own sanity. Trust me, it'll not only make the game easier, but a lot more enjoyable. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching the video and also liking all of these videos. Especially the Link's Awakening one. That one actually been doing not too bad. I've been working hard on these videos, making sure they're better quality. Um, and yeah, there's also another reason why these videos have been coming out a lot faster because I found a new workflow. <laughs> so, so yeah. But um, anyway, though, the next game that we're going to be talking about is a licensed game that I love. Or a licensed game from a franchise that I love. Now, I haven't even heard of this licensed game until earlier this year, so this should be very interesting to say the least. But like always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And speaking of comment, make sure to comment what you guys think about this video, what I can do better, and alongside that, um, let me know what you think about the game. So if you've seen the movie, let me know what you think of the movies, so on and so forth. Constructive criticism is always allowed. And yeah, but like always, make sure to stay safe and stay vibing, my guys. Yeah!